I think it's not enough ink in that other one. P35. Right? So open P35. P35. So these are for your quick reference, you know. One hit, another hit, another hit, and this one, and this one, you know, Maro Saligo, Maro, you know. Right. At the bot on the top of the two pages, right. Sex between father in law and daughter in law. Sex between father in law and daughter in law. Then on page 35, you'll see verses 15 to 18. Verses 15 to 18. Frame them. 15 to 18. Frame them. Frame them. Now, here we read. Make the guy to read. It speaks about Judah. You know the story. He's going to Timnath to share a sheep. And he sees a woman sitting by the roadside. He thinks she's a harlot. And verse 16 says, And he turned unto her by the way and said, Go to, I pray thee, I'm begging you. Let me come in unto thee. Meaning, let me have sex with you. And you see the words there in brackets. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. He said, you know, the words are in bracket. What are the brackets doing there? You ask the Christian. What are the brackets there for? Most of the fool doesn't know. I want to know why this God put the words in brackets. Hmm? When Moses wrote these things on a tablet of stone, and God told him, now these words put it in brackets. Is that what he told him? Why the words are in brackets? He doesn't know. He said, that means these are not in the original manuscript. These are the words of the translator, the editor. He's editing it. He's trying to exonerate the guy. He said, maybe the poor fellow didn't know. Maybe he knew. Because here we hear today, guys are committing incest with their own, own daughters, three-year and five-year-olds. This is a bloody daughter-in-law, man, and a grown-up young woman and sitting, waiting there by the roadside. She's looking for customers. So why not? Even so, so what? But it's the words in brackets. What are they for? You ask him, you shake him up. What are the words in brackets for? If he knows as well, look, that means the guy, maybe he knew. This is your translator doing that. Have you a right to add something in the Word of God? Anybody? So that's not the word of God. If the rest is, this is not. He'll have to take it that that is not. You see? Right? So, for he knew not. And she said, What will thou give me that thou mayest come in unto me? Teaching your daughter's prostitution. If somebody makes a suggestion to your sister, to your daughter, she has been reading this. She won't say, you know, Sir, you know, you'll, you'll, God will put you into hell. Salah, kya baat karta hai? Huh? No, no, no. She's learned this. What will you give me? Teaching your daughter's prostitution. In the book of God, there's a lesson in prostitution. When the man says, come, let me have sex with you, so what the answer should be, what will you give me? So, he said, I'll give you a baby goat. Why baby goat? Because they didn't carry cash or credit cards. Those days, 3,000 years ago, they didn't carry cash or credit cards. It's a joke, you see. So the guy said, I'll send you a baby goat. She said, what guarantee is there that you will send it? Pledge. You might have sex and join me and go away and don't send it then. Salam So I want some guarantee. He said, what guarantee do you want? He said, your signet means your ring and your bracelet. Bengals used to be those days. And as Asai Musa was carrying his hand. So the old man gave it to her, and he committed incest with his daughter-in-law, and she became pregnant. One hit, twins. Twins, twins like Adia. The whole chapter 38 is a very spicy chapter. It starts with, er, 
Onan and Shela, the three sons. Air is big enough to get married, so the old man gets him married to a woman called Tamar. But Air does something not right in the sight of God, so God kills him. That's 2 Timothy 3.16. When you're expounding that way, it says, now, where does that fit in? You have the time. Where does that fit in? In that, suppose you're expounding that. 2 Timothy 3.16. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, corrections, and instructions unto righteousness. How I remember this? I remember this doctrine, reproof, corrections, DRC, Dutch Reformed Church. DRC, Dutch Reformed Church. So DRC, that, I remember that order. I don't know how you remember all the other references, but now this is how I remember DRC. So doctrine, reproof, corrections, and instructions unto righteousness. Right? This is what, you know, anything that's come from God must fit in one of these three things. Let's take this. Can you think of a fifth, uh, fifth heading under which you can put the word of God? He can't. So, no, can I? I don't want to be too clever. Good enough. That's all. We put it under the four. So, where does this fit in? There he does something that God didn't like. So, God killed him. Where does it fit in? Reproof. Reproof. So you do something like that, what God doesn't want, God can kill you. Right? That's right. Now he tells his second son, Onan, he said, now you go in unto your brother's wife and beget a child by her, so that the name of the deceased can carry on. You see, this was a family thing. You know, they want, they're very jealous to see that the name carries on. Nam mit nuhi jave dunya se. Amara beta ka naam mit nuhi jave. So he said, look, the second fellow will do you a favor. That's a Muhammad. He married, and before he has any children, he died. Now, according to the Jewish law, so you help his widow out, give her a baby, and that name of Muhammad's name can carry on. So now, according to that custom, we're not finding fault with the custom. He's doing his duty. So he goes in unto his brother and sister in law, and while he's about to ejaculate, the thought occurs to him. Because the seed is mine. Salah nam kiska hoga? Mera bhai ka hoga. So at the critical moment he spills his seed on the ground. So God kills him also. Where does that fit in? Reproof. Right. Right. Reproof. Man, you're supposed to do your duty according to your custom. Do your duty, man. But no, jealousy, envy. You don't want your seed to carry your brother's name. So he spills on the ground. So God killed him for that. Right? Now we continue. So the old man tells his daughter-in-law, go and stay at your father's house until the third fellow is grown. But at the back of his mind, he was superstitious. He says, on account of this woman, I lost two sons. Sally, about to ejaculate, the thought occurs to him, because the seed is mine. Sala, naam kiska hoga? Mera bhai ka hoga? So at the critical moment, he spills his seed on the ground. So God kills him also. Where does that fit in? Reproof. Right. Right. Reproof. Man, you're supposed to do your duty according to your custom. Do your duty, man. But no, jealousy, envy. You don't want your seed to carry your brother's name. So he spills them the ground, so God killed him for that. Right? Now we continue. So the old man tells his daughter-in-law, go and stay at your father's house until the third fellow is grown. But at the back of his mind, he was superstitious. He says, on account of this woman, I lost two sons. Sally, what do you call it? She is a witch. Dakan, Dakan. She had two of my sons.